Thank you for joining Pastor Curtis and Joy for this message. If you would like to hear more from Pastor Curtis or Joy, please check them out on their Coker Ministries YouTube channel. Also, please like and subscribe if these messages are a blessing to you. You can also visit their webpage at cokerministries.com. God bless you. Have a great day. This ministry functions on the support of our listeners. We appreciate your prayers and your financial blessings. Your support helps us to continue to share the message of grace, peace, Christ righteousness, and the finished work of the cross. You can give online or digitally at the Cash app. The name is Coker Ministry or Joy Coker. Also at Venmo at Joy-Coker. Or you could mail your support or prayer request to Coker Ministries, 15239 555th Avenue, Parkers Prairie, Minnesota, 56361. We pray God's blessings over you. in Christ, you are blessed, highly favored, and so very deeply loved. Again, thank you for joining us in the Word. Be blessed. everybody ready? I love seeing people chit-chatting, fellowshipping. That's good. That's good. Never get enough fellowship. I encourage you to take every opportunity you can to, to invite someone over, impose yourself on somebody else, whatever. But fellowship, I mean, that's what church is all about. That's what it's all about. General prayer request, there's Kaylee, who is So we have Nancy and, and my mom. And your mom. She finds out, I think tomorrow or Friday, what the biopsy is. It's either cancer or it's not. It's like 50% chance it is or isn't. Yeah. It's not like <laughs> See, each, each one of these people, each one of these situations is an opportunity for us to inject our, our belief. You know, we have an opportunity to bring God into a situation or just bring what the world offers. And our, when you leave somebody, you need to ask yourself, did I impart Jesus or did I just impart what the world imparts? And we've got Is there more faith in the camp when you leave than when you got there? There should be. We've got Michelle and Becky <clears throat> All right. Actually, we're going to do it this time. Shut the lights off. Just leave the door open. Just relax. Just don't 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 be good. don't go off in the Holy Ghost. Just relax. Everybody keep your mouth still. Be at peace. Everybody just take a real deep breath. Let your jaw sag. Just relax your face.
I want you just to picture yourself in an elevator. Just step into the elevator. Just use your imagination. Step into the elevator. Turn around, face the door. Press the up button to the 10th floor. Doors are shutting. Your elevator music's playing. You're watching the numbers go up one, two, three. And just see yourself relaxing with every light that comes on. Now, when you get to the 10th floor, which you're not there yet, you're starting to build in excitement and anticipation. You know that when that door opens, you're going to see Jesus. You're going to be in the presence of God. You're going to experience total love, complete acceptance. You're going to be so excited because Jesus is going to be so excited. He's there waiting for you. Seven, eight, nine, ten. You feel the elevator come to a stop. The door opens and there's Jesus. You don't have to say a word. He's so happy to see you. Now just tell him how thankful you are. Now listen to him tell you how thankful he is for you. Father, we thank you so much for what you're doing in our hearts. We open up the door to our hearts. We've heard you knocking. We open up that door and allow you to come in in this class. Dine with us and we dine with you. Holy Spirit, open the eyes of our understanding. You are the great teacher. May we learn how to relate to you outside and away from our five senses. May we learn how to connect with you on the inside. In our heart zone. And from that, may our five senses respond. Holy Spirit, you are the great teacher. We honor you in this place. 
we acknowledge your presence and we surrender our will to yours. This we pray. And everybody in agreement says, Amen. All right, turn the lights on. Can I start just a minute? <clears throat> sure. Two things. First, I was sharing earlier. Remember last week I was talking about my boss that was all excited because she'd gotten the notes and she was reading the notes and everything was changed. So she's been, she's remained, her countenance has remained changed. And today we were talking to us. I just don't know if you've noticed the difference. I said, yes, I have. Oh, it's just wonderful. Anyway, she was just so excited. She was wanting to pay for the class, and, and she just was so blessed. And she has, she has that hanging up on the wall in her office. She, I, I made her like the, the bookmark circles that we have, and she's got the circles on the wall. And she's just very excited. That's just cool. And the other thing, you know how we were talking about relaxing and everything today? I work in a medical office. So we were talking about cancer a lot, and this one friend was talking about the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, and one of the big new things that they have discovered, especially for breast cancer, is they do massage, body massage, because that puts the body in a great state of relaxation, which is just very helpful to help you get rid of cancer. We just have way too much stress, which activates the cancer cells that we already have in our body and ulcers and all that other stuff. Like he was talking about in the first class. We just carry way too much stress. And like you said before, we get to the place where we think, I have a little bit less stress, and so that's good. But it's still stress. And yeah. stress is unhealthy. <clears throat> but if we can learn to rest, because he said there is a rest for the children of God. There's a rest for us to enter. And that's not just, it, it, it's great for our souls and everything, but it's good for our body too. Resting really is getting away from your five senses. It's that simple. You stop and look at your life. Is there ever a time when you're not aware of your five senses? There should be. Because if you're always aware of your five senses, that means you're always aware of this realm called the flesh. Adam and Eve started out not being aware of their five senses. So we need to develop time where we're away from the five senses and, it, and uh, acutely aware to the five senses of the heart. You know, we mentioned this before. The scripture says, taste and see that the Lord is good. That doesn't mean like this. <laughs> Everybody knows that this is good. You know what I'm saying? But it doesn't mean that. It means, you know, it's, 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 it's a word that explains what's going on on the inside. You know. If you experience <clears throat> Jesus getting off the elevator, that was tasty. I mean, there, there's just so many, uh, just like the little exercise we did just in. And that was just a quick little, if you ever had the time or if you ever want to, you can come up, we can, I'll, I'll come over to your house, you can come over to my house. We'll go through some sessions of meditative sessions where we just put you, it's, there's actually a whole program out there. Uh, I have done everything but not get certified <laughs> uh, to be a coach for doing this kind of thing. But there's, <clears throat> don't think that this is something new. And there's whole ministries out there that are activating this type of procedure. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> and um, there are people that are becoming certified coaches for this. And um, it's just really learning how to get involved, be sensitive to your heart instead of the outside. And we just need to get away. You know, stress, the, the, the reduced amount of stress is not peace. We think it is because that's as peaceful as we get. But that's not, the, that's not rest. There's a place called rest, and I believe it's not attached to your five senses on the outside. I believe it's attached to the five senses on the inside. And we're going to talk about more of that. Too. I was asked by someone <clears throat> this last week. I'm not going to mention any names. That way you know that... If you freely ask me questions, whatever, we may use them to talk about in class, but I'm not going to divulge where, anything, not that it's any big deal or anything, but just uh, because that's what I need. I need to hear questions. Remember, this is the first time we've taught this class. 
And so if there's something that needs to be explained in more depth, something that we just blew right over, please let us know because, because we're trying to figure out what to put in the 13 weeks. I think you're all doing you know, but, well, appreciate that. And, uh, yes, it's blowing up. Yeah, my head is getting big. <laughs> but, but there's still a better way of communicating and, and things like that. Just like the person had asked, you know, you know how do I meditate? You know, they'd always heard that meditation is bad. I mean, I was raised with that, you know, being, being the age that I am. That's the first thing you have to overcome is that negative seed. See, as long as you have that, if you, as long as you have that negative seed in your heart, it's going to fight. Remember what we just talked about, the gatekeeper. The thought, pro- the thinking process, the gatekeeper in your heart. Oh, I don't like that word meditation. No, that's bad. See, the gatekeeper for years have believed that meditation is bad, so it's not going to let it in your heart. So you've got to bypass that gatekeeper. You've got to reprogram the gatekeeper to receive things called meditation. See, that's the whole process. See, it just doesn't happen with meditation, but that's a great example. Because the very heart gatekeeper, see, remember we talked about a couple weeks ago that the gatekeeper, uh, a gate will allow things in and will allow things out. So if the gatekeeper doesn't allow any information about meditation in, it's not going to allow the heart to produce any energy to meditate. You wonder why you can't meditate? Because your heart's not, your gatekeeper's not letting the energy come out for you to do it. That's what we've been talking about is bypassing or reprogramming. And, and see, that's really what we're doing is just being... Th- we're, gonna, we're, the gonna, fir- we're chipping away little by little. Remember, you, this is a process that really takes... You really need this type of thing every day, twice a day, for 30 days. At the end of 30 days, you'll be so... And we're going to do some things today to help you in the process of walking this out. I just, we, I just want to share... Um, Jesus said... My peace I give to you, not like the world gives, do I give. It's my peace. And you can say the same thing about meditation. It's my meditation I give to you, not like the world gives. It's not the right. world kind of meditation. It's mine. It's different. It's the original. That's what I asked the Lord to show me. Because I just was like, I didn't want to blank my mind. No. Right. We don't blank. It know. tells us to Lord, think. I just want, and every morning I wake up starting the same way. Lord, I just want your peace. I just want to meditate on your thoughts, your things that are pure and good. And as you... And still, I find myself drifting. Oh, man, I got to make that phone call. Okay. Well, see, that's, that, that's, we're going to talk about, we're going to help you, hopefully today, some of these things we talked about will help you step one, step two, step three. We do that and, in praise um, and worship. I'll be in praise and worship even up there at the keyboards. I'm up there, and then, you know, this song will come by. Oh, I've got to do this when I get home. And then you got, you know, that's where you have to take the podcast. Okay, does everybody have a heart monitor page? You should have a heart monitor page from back there. Now, see, here again. I'm going to take two. One to write on today and one for blank. All right. And again, you will put in, you will get out of this class only what you put into it. We're going to talk about that in this class today, about intentions. You can take two perfectly identical and, and strength and ability athletes. And the only, what will make one win the race was the one that intended to win the race. You will never do anything outside of your intentions. Hear that? You'll never do anything outside of your intentions. Unless you first intend to do something. Matter of fact, we're going to talk about this some more, but your intentions are totally subject, or you, let's put it this way, they're a fruit of your identity. Identity is so, such a powerful thing. I mean, if you don't see yourself... See, Samson was birthed a liberator. Everybody know the story about Samson? He was birthed a liberator. He was brought up as a liberator. He lived his young life as a liberator. And what did he do? 
He liberated until information came into his life that he received and accepted in his heart. Now he saw himself as a lover instead of liberator. His whole world came crashing down because he changed his view and opinion of himself. It wasn't according to God's will. It was according to someone else's will. And see, a lot of us are living our life today according to someone else's will. Ooh, did someone just get spanked in here? A lot of us are living according to someone else's will instead of God's will. You're seeing yourself in some other way than what God sees you. That's why what you experience is because of your reality and your reality is because of what you see and what you see is determined by your view and where you're at. And you're not at the right place. You're not in the right position. That's why we must change the way we see ourselves. We're seated in Christ far above principalities and powers in heavenly places with the crown on your head. I hope and pray, if I can just help you with some of your your imaginations. When that elevator door opens, does that help anybody? Just, just, just develop that. Work with it. As soon as that elevator door opens, see Jesus standing there with a crown on, in his hands going, ah, and slapping that crown on you, you know. Or maybe reaching over and shining the crown on your head because it's already on there. I still like the one because I'm a hugger. You know, just to, Jesus give me a big old bear hug. I get three... I get three pats on the back, you know, just like guys do, you know. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. You know, that's, that's a guy thing, you know. You know, girls go. I get a hug in every day. You know, and so, and just those are the kind of visualization things you can do to help yourselves. You know, the, your imagination is not evil. The scripture talks about a vain imagination. But a vain imagination doesn't mean the imagination is, it's the way you're using it is vain. But God gave us imagination. He gave us the ability to imagine. You know, we're supposed to be able to project. Matter of fact, we're, today's class just may... And I feel sorry for those that hadn't been here every, every week because there's some stuff we just can't go back and talk about that were probably the thing that you needed to hear if you weren't here. <laughs> I love that. Anyway, heart monitor. That's this piece of paper in front of you. We haven't talked about it much, but this is how you use a heart monitor. Real simply, the heart monitor, this is my definition of the heart monitor, a journal uh, of observations and end results. That is the purpose of this piece of paper. Now, I would make 20, 30 copies of this, put it in a notebook, and put it beside your bed or by your couch that you go sit on early in the morning when you first wake up. Notice it says here it's a journal of observations and end results. On this heart monitor piece of paper, the Bible makes it perfectly clear that we're supposed to write things down and make them clear. And you won't ever remember the things, your goals and dreams, unless you write them down. You need to put on there, and I don't mean goals and dreams like I want to have a million dollars in five years. We're talking about heart issues, all right? So on your heart monitor list, what you're supposed to do is, how do you want to feel? What kind of emotions do you want to have in your life in 30 days? What kind of emotions do you want to overcome in your life? If you're a really emotional person, do you want to have better control of your emotions in 30 days? Do you want to not get angry as often? Do you want to be more at peace? What kind of... You may want to be happier. Man, I just wish I could laugh more. You may want to write that down. First of all, you need to understand, too, there are no good or bad emotions. Okay? You need to understand this. We're going to go to the board. There are no good are bad emotions. The Bible says weep with those that weep, mourn with those that mourn. Okay? Be angry and sin not. 
Everybody look up here real quick. This is the spirit. This is the soul. And this is the body. Body, soul, and spirit. It's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that lives in me. This is the where the spirit and the soul join, where these circles overlap, is the area of the heart. The middle one is the the soul. Your thought. The soul is the realm of your thoughts, feelings, emotion, and will. Of course, you know the body, the flesh. It's touch, taste, sight, smell, and hearing. Your five senses. This is what we know as our actions, the world of our actions. You're always judging your actions according to the outside. Okay? We know from what we've taught before that thoughts lead you to feelings. Feelings lead you to emotions. Emotions will lead you to act out what you have thought about. So thoughts, feelings, emotions, they lead to your actions. Most people try to stop their actions, but never stop their thinking. As long as you're thinking about those things, you're going to produce them on the outside. It's real simple, okay? Those thoughts that you have are cradled, are birthed from a belief system. It doesn't matter what the situation is in your life, your heart will birth the thoughts that you have. Every thought you have about a situation comes from the way you believe about it, about your subconscious realm. If you heard a loud noise right now, well, let's just put, if you're, if the, the illustration I've used before, if you're a mom and you're sitting there at the kitchen and you have a window and you're just observing the daisies in your yard and you've got a little garden up there in your little window box and you're doing your dishes and you, you haven't seen your kids in a little while and you know they're outside playing and you heard them laughing five or six minutes ago and all of a sudden you hear a car slam on its brakes outside your house. See, a belief system, see, it made you think a certain way. And you just rush out there. Even in here, you thought of your kids getting hit, but your kids were in the backyard playing all the time. There was no reason to think like that. Except something in your heart was programmed due to some other experience, something you fed was fed on TV, some other information. Now remember, what is written on your heart is information plus emotion. Information plus emotion. I saw my dog got, get hit by a car at a very young age. Information with emotion. I see a dog in the street now. I go spastic. You know, I'm thinking the worst is going to happen because of what I've experienced. Until a person sees that, I see kids with, walking their kids' dog in the street all the time. They think nothing of it because they have never seen. They have never yet. They've yet to experience it. Okay, so that just shows you the way we are. Now, what I was getting into all this is is that when we're talking about the heart monitor and your emotions, see, most people are trying to, this is the way we are as Christians, we try to stop our actions, don't do this, right? Well, now that we're really spiritual and we go to a charismatic, tongue-talking, faith church, you know, that's, you know, believes in healing and everything, a New Testament covenant believing church, we deal with our actions on the outside. We curb these babies, right? And now, so, so now that we're so much better than everybody else, we deal with our emotions. We try to subdue our emotions. And, but really, there's nothing wrong with emotions. Emotions are not the problem. Just like the actions were not the problem. See, religious people look at the emotions. I mean, the actions. Just stop. No, actions are not the problem. Emotions are just indicators. Everybody write down the word indicators. Emotions are just indicators of what's in your heart. That's all they are. You know, has anybody been, has anybody know what an idiot light is on the dash of a car? You know why they call them idiot lights? 
and we won't go there no further. <laughs> they put them there for people who can't look at gauges. And when the light comes on, you're supposed to stop. Some people don't. Yeah, you stretch out at the oil. Make the oil work for its money. You know what I'm saying? But all those lights are doing, there's nothing wrong with the light. It's just indicating there's a problem somewhere else. Okay? So, emotions are just indicators. If, there's, if you don't like the emotions you're experiencing, the feelings and the thoughts, let's go right to the problem. It's coming from the heart. Now, see... Christianity is not about you controlling your emotions or not admitting you have them. What we want you to do on this heart monitor list, notice what I said it was, a journal of observations and end result. Observations of what? I want you to observe your emotions. I want you to go through a series of weeks and months with a journal where you're journaling your emotions. And I'm not talking about just during the day. See, what's going to start happening, and mark my words, you will experience this. If you're willing to go through this process, you're going to be more sensitive and aware of your emotions because you haven't been. You've just been letting the world dictate and you've been reacting. Now you are going to begin the process of becoming acutely aware of how you feel all the time. In the mornings, you're going to wake up, how do I feel? What, what were my emotions? Have you ever been aware of your emotions after a dream when you woke up? See, it's possible for you to be aware of your emotions when you first wake up. So this heart monitor list is, is, is for you to journal your emotions and even when you're at peace, when you feel, when you feel loved, when you feel... You know, we're, we're not talking about... You know, you, I, I got emotional by having one of these today. We're not talking about that kind of emotion. We're talking about, you know, what the part, the part you're not going to share. I don't want you to share this with anybody. Husbands, kids, me. This is between you and you. You know, if something happened in your home and it made you feel a certain way, remember that and write it down. Not right then necessarily, but at night when you put in your journal, put in your heart monitor. The heart monitor is for you to monitor your emotions of the heart, your indicators. Because you will really not know the condition you're in until you check out the lights. See, some of us have been had red lights flashing on our dash for a long time and we just put black duct tape over them or took out the light bulb. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That doesn't make that doesn't make the problem go away. My husband put that over the dash thing to when I was going to take he had me to take the truck in to get it inspected. So, so he had to check it. I said, don't you think they can see that? $18. But see, that's the problem is in our life, that's usually what we do. We just, I don't, has anybody reached in there, uh, taken the dash apart and taken out that light bulb that says check engine light? Uh-oh, look at those mechanics looking around. No, no, not for self-gain or anything, of course. Oh, you put after the inspection. Okay. <laughs> Clear the code and rush to this. Yeah, they get you on that, though. No, no, no. Not me, I've never, oh, no, oh. No, you just gave it to another friend of you. There you go. No. Yeah, you got you got to drive it for 90 miles for it to reset. Okay, so in other words, that's all counseling does. When you go to counseling, you try to get your everything reset, but it doesn't work because you live another week or two with your mate or whatever, and the problems exist again because you hadn't dealt with anything. Counseling is just behavior modification. We are not here to change your behavior. We're here. This class is here to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The transformation of the power of God in your heart. So I want you to begin to journal. Now, we're going to go off our notes here. I don't know all we got written here, but uh, the best time to journal 
excuse me, the best time to be aware of your heart zone is twice a day. In the morning, first thing, and in the evening, last thing. Let me say it another way. In the evening, and then in the morning, What's the difference? Genesis 1 says this, that God created the heavens and the earth. And he went through and did it in six-day increments. At the end of every day, it said, in the evening and the morning, God starts his day in the evening. We in our civilization in America start our day when? In the morning. morning. Totally contrary to the way God is. God starts His day in the evening. And how do we know this? Because the children of Israel are God's people. And their day starts in the evening. It starts at sunset every day. Well, that's because you're on late shift. (laughs) So in other words, we need to start this process. And what I mean by start this process is this. I don't want you to get up in the morning and start planning your day. Guess when you're supposed to plan your day? In the evening before you go to sleep, while you're laying there on your bed begin to see the end of that day. Just try this for a month. Can't do it for, do it for two weeks. Do it for a week. And watch the difference in your emotions. Knowing where you're going to drive. Start thinking about the day ahead. Now here's the key. See the end of that day being complete and what you want to accomplish and how you want to feel at the end of the day. Because what you feel at the end of the day is a direct result of what's in your heart, not circumstances. You're so used to making your heart, your circumstances determine how you feel that it's natural. Now we need to flip that around. You want your heart the way you feel to determine what you do. Don't start your day in the morning. Start your day in the evening. Sit down with your heart monitor. Project the day out. Think it through. Count the cost. Jesus said, who builds a house unless he counts the cost? See the end. Here's the phrase. See the end from the beginning. Of course, if you know me any length of time, here it comes. Here comes the message. When was Jesus slain? He was not slain at Calvary. He was crucified at Calvary. He was slain before the foundations of the world. God had it all finished before he even made Genesis 1-1. God had the end result already done before He started His day. You want some more scripture for that? I'm glad you asked. I could tell you were fixing that because we're going to have some fun. Everybody turn with me to Romans chapter 4, verse 17. As it is written, I have made you a father. I'm going to stop. I want everybody. You can. Okay. Let me know when everybody gets there. Just everybody stop. Just God made you a father, didn't he? I knew he was on that one already. Is everybody ready? Now just sit back and listen, even though you've turned your pages. Romans. Romans chapter 4, verse 17. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. What did God just make Abraham? Was he one? 
No. At this time, he was not. He hadn't even given birth to anybody. They were barren. But God saw him as a father. Just didn't see him. He said, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him who he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they do. So in other words, God saw and called Abram, Abraham as a father even though he wasn't one. He saw the end before he began it. Abraham was given the vision of his future and then just walked it out. It's sort of like, yeah, it is. Basically, it's in the same realm. It's every, God, God does everything on earth because he's already finished it. When you've been given purpose and destiny, it's, that's why it says make your call and election sure. Know that you're a king's kid. Know that you're more than a conqueror. Know that you're part of the kingdom of heaven on earth. Know that you have everything that you pertains to life in God. As a matter of fact, that we're going to read it. This is your verse that you're going to read uh, read tonight or this week over and over Ephesians chapter 1 we'll read it at the end of the class listen to this don't, don't write it down just, just, just listen Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 we're going to read through verse 14 it's literally the longest sentence in the Bible not with the American punctuation but in the Greek punctuation okay blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Just as He chose us in Him before. Everybody say before. Before. The foundations of the world. Wow. That we should be holy and without blame and before Him in love having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. When was all this done? Before. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. You wonder why I'm a grace man? which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. When? Before. Having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to the good pleasure in which he purposed in himself. See, he purposed in himself that it was going to bring him pleasure to love us so much. Oh, gosh. That in the dispensation and the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in Him. In Him also we have obtained an inheritance. When did we obtain that inheritance? Before. All this is stuff before. Being predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of His glory. I like what it says, Christ in us, the hope of glory. In whom, excuse me, in Him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom you also believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of His glory. I tell you what, if you just read that the rest of your life, you would not have a religious bone in your body. If that was all the gospel you would bring in, that's all you really need. Because if you were to understand who you were and what's been done for you and believed it in your heart, your world would never be the same. Hmm. 
God sees the end before the beginning. We need to have that kind of mindset. We need to see the end before the beginning. We need to start our day in the evening. Sit down, plan out your day. As you plan out your day for tomorrow, write down your emotions that you want to see during or at the end of the day. Now, here's some other things. We're just going to go through some things. I hope I don't forget some. I'm not going to try to look at them. Can I just ask a question? If, If you plan out your day at night, then while you're sleeping, can the Holy Spirit kind of work things out and work the kinks out that you don't know are going to be there because you've made the plan and while you're sleeping, will like sort out for you? See, I really believe with all my heart that when you see the process here of what we're going to tell you to do or suggest that you do, if you do these things during the night, the Holy Spirit is going to bring you wisdom bring you creative ideas to prepare you for the upcoming day because you've already submitted that day to him. You've allowed that night. Matter of fact, here's some things that you're going to say. You're going to say, Holy Spirit, I surrender my dreams. I want you to say it out loud. Hear yourself say it. Let it be your prayer instead of praying for, now lay me down to sleep, pray the Lord, whatever that prayer is. I want you to surrender your dreams. Say, Jesus, as I sleep, I open my door to you into my heart. Do this every night. There's a couple I wills. We're going to get into it later. It says, I will have sweet sleep. These are your confessions before you go to bed. I will have sweet sleep. I will hear God tonight as I sleep. I will surrender my dreams. To God. Ask the Holy Spirit before you go to bed. Matter of fact, this this will blow you away. If it doesn't work the first time, don't stop. I can show you how to never need another alarm clock. You pray, you do this at night. You plan out your day. You add 30 minutes to it in the morning when you need to leave the house. Whatever time it takes you to get up and get ready to go, you add 30 minutes earlier and say, Holy Spirit, wake me up at this time so I can spend it with you. With no other interruptions, no phones. Get up, go to the bathroom, and get right back to your lazy boy and begin to... Be aware of the way you feel when you wake up. Be be sensitive to your indicators. But give God time to speak to you at night. And that's what your journal's for because I... Wait till you see, wait till you hear the, t- I wish in three months we could come back or even a month. You do faithful to this, write down the, and then remember the, ask the Holy Spirit during the day to remind you of the creative ideas that you had during the day that he gave you that you didn't have before. And it happens. Yeah. Then life is not... See, I really believe the Holy Spirit will prepare you for everything that your day has coming towards you tomorrow. He'll give you the ideas. He'll give you the peace. He'll give you the direction. He'll give you the sensitivity not to go someplace. Now, you can overcome that sensitivity through sheer... I call it... uh, What's that word? Stupidity? That's it. Okay. You know... It's really stupid to go against what the Holy Ghost is telling you to do or not to do. But some of us have made a practice. I'm raising my hand for those people on the tape that can't hear this. (laughs) Of being real stupid in my lifetime. Going against what the Holy Ghost said not to do. You know what I'm saying? And guess what? God is a perfect gentleman and will not interfere with your will. So one of the things you're going to surrender when you go to bed at night is your will. You're going to say, God, I surrender 
my will. You want victory over addictions? Surrender your will. David said this, I will bless the Lord at all times. He told his will what to do. I will. He intended, he purposed, just like we talked about, the, you'll never go beyond your intentions. Your intentions are the future opportunities. If you never intend, those opportunities aren't there in your life. So you have to begin this process as we're talking about right now before you go to bed. I intend to surrender my will. My goal tomorrow is to surrender my will to the leading of the Holy Spirit all day long. My intention, Holy Spirit, as I laid my head down to sleep, is to be sensitive to the opportunities to minister to people as you bring them across my path. That way I don't waste time talking to people that you didn't bring across my path. Christopher's had to learn this because he was just being a good Christian, giving his, anybody that asked for money, he'd give it to them. <laughs> uh, 936, no. <laughs> and he says, Dad, I've had to learn. I said, good boy you're learning never I, I didn't like really the phrase I had to learn learning is good being sensitive to the Holy Spirit is good okay but these are things and you may want to add some more to your list of things that you will do at night before you lay, as you're laying yourself lay on the pillow you got the kids to bed put the music in and just begin to relax Ten, ten's a, a good number like the elevator. You know, go to 10. each, And don't rush it. Make it a slow elevator. And every face, see the stress and just relax. And see your face start to sag. And just see your shoulders go limp. And just be good. I, I tell you, I, after doing this, I, it's so easy just to relax. You don't want to do it when you're driving. Oh, I'm serious now. Even though I do, I do listen to it. Yeah, your your body parts just you don't realize how tight your cheeks are. You know they're just 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 relax and learn to relax your face. Give 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 yourself a break. You know, see, you just release stress all the way down. Just one, you know, all the way down your toes. In this program we go. There's a program that you can go through that actually takes you through the. You know, you can see the stress. It all started a long time ago by someone said, breathe in blue. It was a color, just a color, just for your imagination. You know, breathe in blue and exhale some other color, red. You're breathing in peace and you're exhaling stress. Just that vis visualization helps you. Uh, and there goes the stress. And actually, as you begin to meditate, if you want, you want some a good helpful hint of re relaxing, is actually you realize you're going to breathe in and out of your mouth and, and nose, right? But imagine you breathing, when you're breathing out, through the top of your head. And it's going to sound funny. See your breath coming out of your ears. See it, you know, just not right now because I can see steam coming out of some of y'all. But, you know, just, and just releasing that stress from that specific point in your body. And then see, when you get there, start going either down the escalator or up the escalator or through the uh, elevator, whichever one you choose to use. Uh, it doesn't even have to be that, you know. Um, find some other avenue. But see yourself some way where the doors open or all of a sudden, boom, there's Jesus. And the next morning, write down how you felt. Remember, your heart monitor is to journal the observations of your emotions. Because you haven't been observing them, you've tried to control them. This is not about you controlling 
your emotions because they're just indicators. Once you observe your emotions, then you can find out what part of you needs work. Where you can zero in on. See, it's not the circumstances that need to change. It's something in your heart that needs to change. That's what we're trying to get to, people. You never mentioned these, but these are good things, good tools. Okay, go ahead. Let me find this. We, um, Brenda gave us the 40 I Ams. So this is one of these good tools that you can use anytime. Just reminding yourself who you are because of Jesus. Put, put this on, t- take you a cassette tape, 8-track tape, reel to reel, however old you are, whatever you got, a CD. Read these aloud. Record your voice. Hear yourself telling you that you are a child of God redeemed by the, uh, from the hand of the enemy. And just go through here. Maybe write them out in your own special little way, whatever you want to do. And hear your voice. Put it in your CD as you're driving down the, in your car, driving down the road. When someone cuts you off or doesn't, just press play real quick. <laughs> Before you have time to... And, yeah. and this one is a similar thing. The prophetic, a prophetic decree of spiritual truth. It's a similar thing. So, just tools. Here's another verse. This is in uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 4. I'm going to start reading with verse 1. We've read this before, but... Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear, least, remember that word fear means phobia, or comes from the word phobia, least any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we have a For we who have believed do enter that rest as he has said. So I swore my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundations of the world. There's even another scripture says that the very works of Jesus were were completed. They were finished before their before Jesus was even born on the earth from Virgin Mary to come do them. They were already done. God sent Jesus here to do what God had already done in his heart. He already saw the end. No invention, I shouldn't say no invention. Oh, come on, that knows awful. Most inventions happen from someone knowing they need the end result. I need to do this. This is the end result, so I need to make something to make that happen. That's the way a creator creates. He sees what needs to be done. There's the end result. And so he goes back here with that in mind, makes this. God wanted someone to love for all eternity because it was going to bring him great pleasure. For him to have that, he said, I've got to create this planet and put man on it and build a tree. So that tree will give birth to another tree so one day my son can pay the price for all these people's sin and hang on a tree. See, God knew he was going to need a tree. So he made the ground for the tree to grow into so his son could fulfill his destiny. See, everything that you have need of to fulfill your destiny, God's already planned it, already provided. It's already here. You don't need him to give you anything. Everything that pertains to life and godliness has already been given. Everybody's down here praying, Oh God, give me this. I already have. We're waiting on God to give us stuff we've already got. Thus, nothing gets done. East Texas, dang it, boy. All right. 
Um... I really, this is real. This exercise on this on this paper, this heart monitor, will help you become more aware of your emotions, especially if you ask the Holy Spirit to make you aware of your emotions. Again, I'm not saying your job is to control it. Now, let me clarify this. If your emotions are out of control and you're going to hit a policeman, control your emotions. But see, there's a reason you're feeling that way. That's what we're after. I don't, when I say don't control your emotions, I'm not telling you to go get in trouble. I'm saying it's not about you controlling your emotions. It's about you changing your emotions. Okay? The reason you have them. Yeah, the reasons you have them. Uh, become, uh, become aware of your emotions. Track them on this monitor. Monitor them. This is the purpose of the heart monitor. Write them down. Make them clear. Uh, Habakkuk 2.2 uh, 2, 2 says in the King James Version, uh, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain on tablets, that he may run that readeth it. I mean, we need to write down what we want to accomplish. Now, the church has always told us in success-orientated churches, Write your vision down. See where you want to be. Listen, it doesn't matter where you're at. If you're still miserable on the inside, I don't care if you're the pastor of a 5,000 member church where there's healings every day. If you're miserable inside, if you can't control, if, you, if you're still reacting to the world instead of responding in your heart, you haven't gone anywhere with God. Ministry is not about doing it's about people. Most ministers, because their hearts are not right, their self-worth is still wrapped up in their success in the ministry. And their idea of success in the ministry is numbers or buildings or other things. And so their whole drive is six numbers and buildings. Our offerings. And they don't feel a success unless they accomplish these goals. That's their vision. Our vision is a 5,000 member church. What about the one person that you're living with the rest of your life called your wife? What about the two people that your family is connected with? A person told me this long time, you deepen your ministry, God will widen it. You just be faithful. Ministry is about the ones God's given you right here. You're, the, you're my ministry. Is it easy for me to get off in the flesh and think of, yeah, I'd love to have a big church, be pastor, and I'll just be rocking and rolling, yeah. But I, I've got to be faithful with what God's given me. You, had, you need to be faithful with what's God's... And see, we need to know that our heart's right. See, one of the greatest stories... In it, well, they're so great. My favorite story, my favorite story right now is the one I'm fixing to tell you, but that may change next week because I'll have another favorite story, you understand? But right now, my favorite story in the Bible is where Peter, it says, I'm going to do this for you and I'll fight for you. I'll die for you, Jesus. I, 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 I. And Jesus says, <laughs> I'm sure he chuckled says, Peter, Satan desires to sift you as wheat. And Jesus did not pray and ask God to protect Peter from the Satan. He said, but when you've been converted, then go help your brethren. Because in that state of heart, see, he had to experience something. He hadn't experienced yet. See, Peter had a lot of intellect. But he was still the center of his universe. I, I, I. Listen to some of the songs we sing. It's all about... That's not worship.
there's some songs out there we sing that all the fingers being pointed right here. One of them even says, I this, I this, I this, I this. But see, Peter had to be converted. Before Jesus said that, Peter, when you've been converted, when you've been transformed, See, Peter had to go through something on the inside before he could really go help other people because as long as Peter was still I, 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 whenever he helped other people, he was really helping himself. He was supporting his value. He was supporting why he was doing what he was doing. Are you really doing what you're doing because you love people? Are you really doing what you're doing because you're getting gratification from it? As long as you're the center of your universe, everything you do is for you, not someone else. You can lie to yourself <laughs> all your life if you want to. You're doing it for you. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's called dead works. Wood, hay, and stubble. All right, let's go on. You need to remind yourself when, you get, when you're going in, these, in the mornings. You know, we talked about what you do at night. Surrender your will. Tell yourself, that you tell your will, I will have sweet sleep. I will hear the voice of God. I will commune with God in my heart when I sleep. David did it. He says, I will bless the Lord at all times. We're just trying to do it two times in the day right now. In the evening... And in the morning. Be quiet. I tell you what, one of the, one of the greatest learning experiences I personally have ever had was, I, I keep saying two years, it wasn't quite two years, but two years at a church in Minnesota, I'm not going to say the name of it in case someone gets one of these things. I literally heard the Holy Spirit tell me to be quiet and observe. I went now. I love to talk. If anybody knows me, I love Matthew. Be quiet. I love to talk. I just terrible counselor. I can't listen. Where's that? Of course, I'm terrible counselor. Not behavior modification. But anyway, God put me in observing mode. I was just quiet. And I watched and I listened. I learned more in that two years of what not to do in church than any Bible school could ever taught me about what to do. I learned. That's when I first got introduced to grace because I was just observing And there wasn't any there. <laughs> there wasn't any there. That is for sure. I remember one of the first things that happened. Oh, well, not the first things that happened. One of the first things I remember that was a, 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 a. It's not a miracle. It's not a. But it just made such an impact. Uh, Christina had a Coke in her hand. Now I'm the dean, the the assistant pastor, the youth pastor taught in the Bible school, dean of the Bible school, uh, everything. Did worship, led worship. We did, I mean, everything. Church of about 400 up in Minneapolis. And right outside the foyer in the, the sanctuary, there's a little, and Christina had dropped her Coke. Oh, you forgot to coordinate all the meetings. Yeah, that's right. It was not a, a side tenor when we needed it. And Christina had dropped her Coke and had spilt and there were some people standing around, and she just got all like, oh, no, I've done something. I said, oh, honey, it's just Coke. And the people around there just were like, they thought that was the most awesome thing. That I just, told, it was just Coke. You know, I wasn't going <laughs> to devastate my child, her self-worth, over dropping a Coke when she was probably only... Four? Three, four? It was just a Coke. But they were so blown away 
I mean, they've made such a big deal about it in a positive realm. Because that's it's, it's just the way God is with us. It's just a Coke. It has nothing to do with the love and the acceptance and the self-worth and the value. Oh, you messed up, so what? I, like, I, I know this is a misinterpretation of the scripture, but I like what it says. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, I messed up. But it also says the righteous man gets up and goes again. The unrighteous will waller in his sin because he doesn't see himself as righteous. A righteous man will say, I screwed up, but it's not about me. It's about him. Man. So you messed up. Let's keep going. Why waller in it? That's what he told the, mm. the, the woman. He says, where your condemners, there aren't any. Okay, just get up. Don't say anything. Anyway, be quiet. Observe yourself. Give God permission. Oh, yes. Oh, that's a big one. When you lay down to sleep tonight, God, I give you permission to invade my heart. Whatever verbiage you want to put, commune with me tonight. Get excited about going to bed because you know you're going to meet Jesus there. You know God's going to commune with you. Give him permission. You know why you, have, you need to give him permission? Because he won't go against your will. He will support your will. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. I've heard that so many years talking about spirits and demons. And those spirits and demons are still as active and all this. I've seen people bind the spirit of homosexuality all over uh, San Francisco and it's still there. What that literally means is that God has given us dominion and authority and will not take it away. And whatever we choose with the authority we have, heaven will back us. A king will give his children authority over regions the king may not like what the children are doing but the children still have authority if they mess up and rule the island crazy they mess up and rule the island crazy but they're still king's kids God said for us to have dominion over this world and see God's a sovereign God but he's not a dictator God you don't blame the world system on God. How can God allow? God's not. We are. We're allowing the negative to take place in this world. God gave it to us. Okay? Let's get off that soapbox. God will never violate your will. That's why you need to invite Him into your will. Submit your will to Him when you go to sleep. God, I'm so excited I'm going to lay down. I can hardly get to sleep because I'm so excited that I'm going to meet you in my sleep. Okay? That's, that needs to be how you go to bed. Revelations chapter 3, verse 20 says, Jesus stands at the door and knocks. He doesn't break it open. That's not a salvation scripture. That's to the church people in one of the five churches in the book of Revelations. The lukewarm church. Why was it lukewarm? Because they never opened the door and let Jesus in to the heart. They were only Jesus was only in their head. Does that sound like most church people? This class is about letting you know to open the door. I was gonna sing that song. Am I gonna date myself? Someone's knocking at the door. Someone's ringing a bell. Do me a favor. Open the door. Let him in. (laughs) 
I was singing it all day today. I'm going, oh man, what a song. Someone's knocking at the door. I can just see Jesus. Someone's ringing a bell. You don't like that? I'll record it for you then. You never heard that song? I just dated myself beyond what your years are. Once, yeah, there's, there's not a old folk. You know that song. You guys know that. Don't. This table knows that song, don't you? All right. Everybody all together now. Someone's not. <laughs> you young folk can learn it. It's a classic. <laughs> all right. Ask the Holy Spirit. Oh, here you go. Ask the Holy Spirit in the morning. Holy Spirit, as, as you get into your heart zone again, and that's what you're doing first time, you know, in the evening and in the morning. Holy Spirit, as I continue in my heart zone, quicken to me the things you spoke to me during the night. Bring back to remembrance. And don't sit there and just try to... I mean, just, just take them with you. As you need them, they're going to come up. That's where your faith is. See, the Scripture says that you've heard the Word, now you've got to mix it with faith. It's not about you deciding whether, well, this sounds awful funny. See, the Scripture we read in Hebrews just said that people heard the Word, they did not mix it with faith, so it didn't do them any good. You can hear this stuff. Don't mix your faith. And guess what? You're going to be the same old ugly, reactionary, circumstantial-led person that you were yesterday. Or you can mix your faith with it and apply it and get it to happen in your life. we got to hurry up. Oh. Proverbs 3.24 When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, though uh, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. How many people want sweet sleep? If you're afraid of circumstances, you won't have sweet sleep. Your dreams will even be affected by your fear. Just think of what... See, if your negative... If you can be affected by your dreams, by the circumstances of the world, and affect you in the morning, just think what's going to happen when you're affected by godly dreams at night in the morning. Come on! Why do we always look at the... If it, can hack, if it can happen in the world, it can happen in the Spirit. You can wake up in the morning. I've actually woken up. I, oops. I saw myself preaching in a church of 5,000 in my dream. I, I hadn't even preached yet. I was going up to the pulpit, but they were all excited. They, for some reason, I don't know how I got there, but... They didn't even really, have, they never even had heard me preach yet. And I knew what was going to happen when I took the pulpit. I mean, I knew in my heart. I woke up going, I was ready to take an offering. No, just kidding. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 5,000 people, you know what I'm saying? Out of the heart. Oh, no, man. But I was moved. I don't know how many times I've been moved negative. I sure like it. When you're moved by something that God has done in your head. Oh, if you've never experienced it, do this. Give God a chance to surrender your dreams. And it may happen a couple days, a couple weeks, but just keep on. Keep on. Keep on. Use your magic. This heart zone. Get in your heart zone. That heart zone is what we referred to earlier as the alpha zone. That's what, that's what the world calls it, is the alpha zone. But it's, we're, we're going to call it, that's where you're the most, that's where you're in touch with the real you more than ever any other time during the day. Right before you go to sleep, right after you wake up. That's your heart zone. We talked about surrendering your dreams, your emotions, being aware. Uh, let's, we got to skip on down here. Don't control your emotions, just be aware of them. All right, here's the next half 30 minutes of class. Thankfulness is the number one tool you have to solidify what God is doing in your heart. I want you to be thankful in the evening when you go to bed. When you get into your nice little 
rhythm here and routine amongst the things you're surrendering to God. Tell him that you're so tell him how thankful you are just for the opportunity to go to bed so he can meet with you. Amen. If you're not thankful for anything the rest uh, in all day, thank him for the night that's coming. Then thank him for the day that's coming. Thank him for sending the Holy Spirit to make you aware of the dreams and the visions he gave you during the night. Thank him for the creativity that's going to overcome the situations of the next day. In construction, I'm serious, Todd. The Holy Spirit knows what you're going to come. You can, God can show you a way to avert certain things if you just listen. How you hear that more than anything else is by being thankful for it before it gets there. It's easy to be thankful for things after. But you want to see more of God? Be thankful before it gets there. You know, you know what happens? With, see, when you start becoming thankful, two things take place. The first thing is you're admitting that he's Lord. You're admitting he's Lord. It's placing you in a place of humility. And I believe the moment you surrender your will and your, well, your will to him. Because it wasn't your will that got it, it was his will. So you're thankful for his will in your life. The next thing that jumps up in your life is creativity. The more thankful you are for God moving in your life, the more creative you're going to be. I hope that some of you will never have to work for someone else again. I hope you have people working for you. I hope all of us get, get out of this cycle, this world system of how we're supposed to make money if you don't have it. See, if you have it, you can make money. But most people don't have it. And so we're slaves to the ones that do. But you know what? It only takes one idea. Now, see, I've had ideas. Ask, don't, don't get her started. We don't have enough time. Shh. But I never, I never had the intention of seeing it come to pass. So I never did it. I just had, I have some good ideas. He did, and a year later, but, <laughs> but Somebody it's did. more than just having ideas. It's having the identity. See, your intention is birthed from your identity. You'll never see yourself winning a race unless you know you're a... <laughs> you don't win a race to become one. You win a race because you are one. Mm. That's All right. Imagination is good. Thankfulness. Well, there's a whole teaching we do on thankfulness called the wine of life. The power of thanksgiving. Matter of fact, let's turn there real quick. Romans uh, chapter 1. Most people avoid this. I think it's one of the coolest chapters. Matter of fact, right now it's my favorite story in the, in the Bible. Since the last one. Since the last one, yeah. <laughs> Romans chapter 1. I call this the pervert chapter. It says uh, in verse 18, chapter 1, For the, the wrath of God is revealed from uh, heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because what may be known of God has been manifest in them, for God has shown it to them, for since the creation of this world, his invisible attributes... matter of fact, this is where we started the whole class. The invisible attributes are clearly seen uh, being understood by things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became fruitful in their thoughts and their foolishness 
uh, and their foolish hearts were darkened, and professing to be wise, they became fools. And it goes on and goes on and, says, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God to the image made like Christ. And it goes on and on and on and on. And it goes on to the where they actually uh, became lovers of self. And it goes in, in verse uh, 29 here. So being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, uh, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. Uh, they are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgments of God that those who practice such things. Now, got a question. Those are a whole list of bad things, right? Read the whole chapter. All of that was a result, all started back to a group of people because although they, knew, although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were they thankful. Unthankful. You want to end up just like these people? Don't give glory to God and don't be thankful. I love... the pr- One thing about we talked about with advanced Bible study class... You know, has anybody flipped a coin? I can just... I caught it every time. See? you got to flip the coin around. If you want to be inventors of good things, see, not being thankful, they became inventors of evil things. If you want to be inventors of good things, be thankful and give glory to God. Amen. If you want to be obedient... To your parents, be thankful for your parents. You want to pick one. You want to be filled with righteousness, be thankful. Pick one. Instead of being a backbiter, you want to be someone that, that uplifts, edify, and exhorts your brothers, be thankful. I'm telling you, you want to change your life, be thankful. You want to change the way your boss looks at you at work? You be thankful. Thankful for the hours he gives you. Thank you for the pay. If he fires you, be thankful for the opportunity that he's given you to allow God to move in your life so you can get a better job. He just delivered you from bondage by firing you. Now God can set you free into more finances. It's all a belief system, people. Pick one of these. You want to have a good sexual relationship with your wife? No more babies back there. Nicole, cut it out, guys. No. They can have more. It's okay. Be thankful to God and give glory to God. And your desires will stay in line with the way God intended them to be. People that are lovers of like sexual people, quit being thankful to God. That's what the Bible says. Women that loved women, they forgot to be thankful to God. You want to solve... I wish I had a series on thankfulness. I could sell them in here right now. It would cha- change your life by being thankful. Go to bed being thankful for what God's doing in your life and what He's going to do in your sleep and be thankful for what He did in your sleep and what He's going to do during the day. Watch out. Change your life. Change your life. Humility and creativity is going to just birth forth in your life. Here's a reality of life. It's not a uh, law of physics. It's just a reality. You will only do what you feel empowered to do. How many people ever said, I'm going to go run? And you never did. 
But he never continued. Why? Because you didn't feel the power <laughs> to do it. It was just a thought because everybody else was doing it. You will only do in your life what you feel empowered to do. So far in your life, you've only felt empowered to do what the world has programmed you to feel empowered to do. Just think what's going to happen in your life when you start doing what you feel empowered by God to do. See, Jesus, born of a virgin, heard for the first time as he came up out of the water in Matthew chapter 3, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He felt empowered because his identity was in what God said about him and not because of what he did because he hadn't done anything. The first temptation of Jesus was to turn the rock into bread. No, it wasn't. It was as if you be the Son of God, turn the rock into bread. The temptation was to get him to prove on the outside what he was on the inside. His response was, man should not live by the outside, by bread alone, but by the words or what you hear from God is what man shall live by. Our life, the life that we're supposed to live on this this earth is supposed to be empowered from heaven, from the spirit, will affect the flesh. The flesh. Jesus said, man shall not live by this but he shall live by that. And that's what it's all about is you. That's what walking in the spirit is, is knowing who you are, your identity. Because once your your identity is sure in your heart, then you're going to be empowered. Once you know you're righteous in your heart, you're going to be empowered to walk righteous. You know, most of us think that righteousness is something we do. Righteous is neither moral or ethical behavior. Well, that's not righteous. You ever hear anybody say that? (laughs) That just wasn't very righteous. Righteous is not a doing thing. It's not an action. Righteous is a position you hold with God. It's right standing with God. And from that, it produces fruit in your life. That's why we call it the fruit of righteousness. We judge, we always look at the action as being the, what's righteous. No, no. What's righteous is your position. And from that identity, now you do what you do out here. Man, I tell you, that'll set you free. You ever get that, you ever get that one down? Empowerment is directly related to your identity or empowerment is the fruit of your identity we are, I'm glad we already read this Ephesians chapter 3 3 through 14 that's your scripture that you're supposed to read all week long read it before you go to bed read it when you wake up in the morning Ephesians 3 3 through 14 we read one oh I'm sorry no Ephesians 1 3 through 14 14. I'm sorry. Read that. That's the wrong thing. Yeah, she no draw. Ephesians 1, 3 through 14 is your verse, your scripture reading. Your heart key that you're supposed to tell yourself, that you're supposed to murmur under your breath every time before you answer the phone, before you uh, bite into a hamburger. I don't care how often you do, just do it often. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I have what God says I have. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I have what God says I have. Now, the question you got to ask yourself, what are you going to do today? 
after you confess that, your question to yourself is, what am I going to do? What are you going to intend to do? You won't ever intend to do anything until you know your identity. See, if you see yourself as a lover, like Samson did, (laughs) you're going to intend to do some things that you shouldn't be doing. Got it? You know when you know when David, King David, messed up with the the lady taking a shower or bath on top of a roof. Do you, you know when he messed up? When he looked. Thank you. We got a wise man over here. The scripture says that in in the season when kings go to war, David didn't. See, if he would have saw himself as a king doing what kings do, he wouldn't have been on top looking out his window at that girl taking a, taking a bath. So he wasn't seeing himself as a king. So he wasn't doing what kings did. He was being lazy. Anybody having trouble in your life when you've been lazy? I'm raising both my hands. <laughs> Amen. We're passing it. Again, I I, I really believe that you guys need to just uh, come up with some type of scenario to help you when you're in your heart zone to actually encounter the presence of God. Somehow, some way, develop a picture that will help you, whether it's walking down a beach and seeing someone afar off, but it's real foggy and you can't make, and the closer you get, the clearer they get. And as you count to 10 or 10 down to 1, see them getting clearer and clearer, and all of a sudden you see who it is, and they see who it is, and you see yourself embracing Jesus. Does it sound like heresy? Against religion it is. Religion will tell you not to do this. Do you think God is telling you? If you've ever had a thought, says, I don't know if this is right or wrong. Got a question. Has God, do you think God is telling you not to meet with him? I don't think so. So if you have any thought, and and, and remember, thoughts are not good or bad, just like emotions are not good or bad. They're indicators of what's in the heart. So if you have thoughts that don't have God in them, God's not in your heart. If God's not in your heart, the Bible says that's an evil heart of unbelief. Ooh, what a way to end class. Quiet. (laughs) Everybody hold up the body. It is the fulfillment of the old covenant. He said, do this. Jesus, we remember today that you fulfilled the old covenant. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus, you held up the cup and said, this is the cup of the new covenant. Do this in remembrance of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I do. I do because he did.
Thank you for joining Pastor Curtis and Joy in this message. If you would like to hear more from Pastor Curtis or Joy, please check them out on their Coker Ministries YouTube channel. Also, please like and subscribe if these messages are a blessing to you. You can also visit their webpage at cokerministries.com. God bless you. Have a great day. This ministry functions on the support of our listeners. We appreciate your prayers and your financial blessings. Your support helps us to continue to share the message of grace, peace, Christ righteousness and the finished work of the cross. You can give online or digitally at the Cash app. The name is Coker Ministry or Joy Coker. Also at Venmo at Joy Coker. Or you could mail your support or prayer request to Coker Ministries, 
15239 555th Avenue, Parkers Prairie, Minnesota, 56361. We pray God's blessings over you. Remember, if you are in Christ, you are blessed, highly favored, and so very deeply loved. Again, thank you for joining us in the Word.